Hi. What's up, guys? So I was really impressed with the figure art Iron Man Mark 50, and I just couldn't pass up Thanos. He looks amazing and has what looks to be the best Thanos sculpt so far. Plus, you guys said you wanted more Marvel, so I totally had to get him, you know? I mean, like, seriously. Yeah. Anyways, I've been waiting to bust him open since I got him, so let's get this review rolling. Starting with the front, we get a nice open window display, as well as this nice gold foil printing here, as well as the Infinity War logo. Here's one side, and the other side with an angry Thanos. Here's a top, here's a bottom with a blue fin sticker, and here's a back with glam shots showing the different heads hands, poses, as well as the UPC. And there he is, guys, Mr. T himself, Thanos. And man, does that gauntlet look nice. Starting with the head, we get the best looking Thanos face sculpt to date. Just short of the Hot Toys version, though. The contours and curves of his face are just absolutely stunning. I mean, just look at how deep the eye wells go. And look at that nose of sculpting. Look at how deep they made the nostrils. His little weird grimace looking chin there. I mean, he looks great. And it's very faint to see, but he actually has some little contouring paint on his face as well. Little kind of photorealistic painting, similar to the Marvel Legends. Even the rest of his head isn't just round, he actually has contours and curves as you can see, showing the bone structure underneath, which is quite impressive. Although the head articulation is minimized because of these little things here on his side, so he can only turn his head that far left, that far right, wait, did I get that right? And this far up, and that far down. And of course, the head pops off here, pretty cool structure underneath, and it shows a little ball joint up here, and the neck actually moves too, quite a bit actually, although it's pretty pointless because the head gets stuck on these things as you can see. Moving into the body, it's a very simple suit design, but man is a sculpting clean and cut. The suit texturing lines and details are all 3D rays and you can actually feel it when you run your finger across it. And the gold up here just looks glorious. I like the glossy black paint up here too. And of course the belt looks great as well. And the details on the back is the same as the front except on the back, although he has these interesting little rubbery flap here, they're pretty soft and they have that that nice texturing there as well as you can see and hidden underneath here is the legal mumbo jumbo now for articulation has very little forward and very little back as well as very little side twisting motion there but side to side is quite a bit. On to the arm. Starting with the boring arm here, he has kind of a translucent -y purple look to it for the plastic, which is kind of interesting. I'm, I'm kind of tossed on whether I like it or not. He does have that scarring or birthmark or whatever that is on here, which is pretty cool, but the muscle sculpting on here is just intense. Just look at that. He looks like he could just punch a goat or something. And he even has some veins over here too. Now he has kind of a dog bone joint here for his shoulder, as well as a butterfly joint up here, giving him quite a bit of movement as you can see. You get lots of range. I really like this glossy black too. And it goes about that far up. And you get the double jointed elbow that also hides the joint when you fully extend it. And his hand spins as well as going up and down. But now let's take a look at the gauntlet. The first thing that I notice is that gorgeous bright gold paint which just catches your eye. And it's actually a brighter gold than the chest piece right here. And the second thing that caught my eye are the infinity stones here. They're not just painted on, they're actually like some sort of clear acrylic ball thingamajig, but they actually look like gemstones and they look great. Well, except for the time stone here. I, I think they just gave up on that one. And of course the metalwork detailing on the gauntlet just looks spot on and very well sculpted. Especially the fingers up here. Just look at it. It actually really does look like an old world metal glove. Now they have a really neat feature here for articulation. As you can see, this little gauntlet piece that sticks out here will prevent him from going all the way up. So what they do, it actually pops up and you get the full range of motion up and down and it spins. It's pretty nice, so you can just kind of pose it wherever you want or whatever and then push it back down and there you go. Now for the legs, we get some more of that nice cloth texturing just like the upper body, although overall it's pretty simple because, you know, I mean, they're they're just pants. His boots though is where it's at with these nice like gold chin guards or knee guards or whatever, and it continues all the way to the back here as you can see with more of that nice gold. And then you get the texturing on the boots as well. I actually like this paint too, it's very glossy and it looks kind of purplish, like a very deep purple or maybe a brown, I, I, I can't tell. And he's got some little buckles on his boot as well. And there's the bottom of his feet for you, which is just super plain and flat. And the boot can go that far forward, but not very far back because of that back piece there. Has a little bit of side to side movement there. And the toe, as you just saw, goes up as well. And the knee bends about that far back. And it has a little bit of side to side movement there, but I, I feel like it might be able to go more, but it feels also like it's gonna break, so I don't wanna really push it. And the leg goes about that far forward, but not very far back because it gets stuck on this button. 
butt piece right here. Now one thing annoying to note is that when you lift the leg all the way Oh, geez. Well, I was about to talk about the chafing first, but I guess we'll talk about the leg popping off. That actually happens quite a bit when you extend the legs, and you can see here, it looks like it should just slide in like so. And here's one thing I want to show you guys, because I had such a hard time. You think it should just pop in, because like that, so when you push it, and you think you're good, and then it just falls off again. But what you actually have to do is make sure this is straight, and then make sure this is straight, like so and then you put it back in and you actually push inwards this way. Pop. Pops in and now you're good until it pops off again, of course. Now as for the chafing here, as you can see, there's some marring here and that happens because when you fully extend it up, you see how it brushes up against there, it shapes up against there. You end up with that kind of high spot, like, you know, shininess there, which is really a bummer. I mean, they, they really just like kind of failed on the legs here. And now for the accessories. He comes with two additional heads. The first one has kind of a slight smile to it, so you can do the whole Thanos quote, that does put a smile on my face. And the back of the head is the same as the other one. You can kind of see the seam line right there where they just attached it. And that's what the inside looks like to attach it to the body. And then you get the angry face, which just looks so mean looking and angry. <laughs> Go figure. But yeah, just look at those teeth there. I mean, just so detailed and all like the anger wrinkles and everything looks amazing and of course the rest of the head is just the same there and the inside and if I remember correctly I think the only time in Infinity War that he got this angry was during the Battle of Titan and am I right is, is that right and he comes with three additional purple hands there one of which being a cool snappy finger although I find it kind of weird that they made the purple hand the snappy finger because isn't he supposed to snap with a gauntlet and finally he comes with two additional gauntlet hands one being open and the other being slightly open and even though it doesn't come with too many Accessories, it is enough to get some pretty fun and interesting poses. And here he is next to the partially built Marvel Legends Thanos, who's still partially built because I'm waiting for Taskmaster to go on sale because I don't really want that figure, just, just the leg. As you can see, the Legends version is much bigger, both height-wise and width-wise. The figure art looks much more fit, which I like much better. This one looks kind of fat, actually, like, like he let himself go or something. Plus, the color palette is just so much more vibrant on the figure arts compared to the Marvel Legends. This one just looks so bland in comparison, especially on the gauntlet. And here's a comparison of the side profile. And here's a comparison of the back. Oops. Thanos! Which one? Uh, uh, that one. Me? Oh, no, 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 no. He is $90. He is too expensive and delicate to beat around. Here, you can play with the Marvel Legends version. Nobody likes to sculpt anyways. Okay. All right, now for some comparisons. Here he is next to the SH Figure Arts Infinity War Iron Man, the Marvel Legends Captain America, the Hero Vision Iron Spider, the Marvel Legends Infinity Thor, the Marvel Legends Proxima Midnight, the Marvel Legends Low Key, the Marvel Legends Gamora, the Marvel Legends Nebula, the Marvel Legends Mantis, the Hero Vision Doctor Strange, and Star Turd. And the Marvel Legends Wolverine. Just cause. Well guys, this is hands down the best Thanos figure you can get to date. And his size compared to Marvel Legends figures isn't bad either. But it's definitely display only with its finicky leg joints and top notch paint. Either way though, I'm really starting to like figure arts. Just not the price. Anyways guys, thanks for joining me in another video. I hope you enjoyed it and until the next time, peace.